This is Prana Vadani, nephew of billionaire Gautam Adani, one of the most powerful and controversial figures in Indian business. He probably looks out of place walking through Dharavi, which is Asia's biggest slum, located in India's financial capital, Mumbai. But he's visiting this area made famous by the movie Slumdog Millionaire because he's leading one of the most challenging projects the Adani Group has taken on. Thank you. Pranav is spearheading the redevelopment of this network of makeshift shelters and structures, which is home to about a million of the most disadvantaged people in the city. The Idanis see developing the area as key to Mumbai's evolution as a modern city. However, many who live here worry they'll be left without homes and livelihoods. They fear they will have to move out of their houses and close their businesses to make way for modern apartments, offices, and malls. Bloomberg's Anto Antony asked Prana Vadani in an exclusive interview about the challenges the controversial redevelopment poses for the Adani Group. It looks like a very complex project to execute because there are so many socioeconomic challenges. How are you planning to go about it? Dharavi project is, of course, a challenging project. Um, it's a project that, since the last almost four decades, different governments have been trying to redevelop. Finally, now they've been able to do it. We were very aggressive while bidding. We bid almost two times, twice the second bidder that we had over there. While, yes, it is a good financial project, but at the same time, what is important to us is the kind of purpose that we will be able to do for a project like this. The purpose to be able to change the lives of almost a million people. And I can also tell you that it's a project like this which will really help us build the legacy for the Adani group. You knew that there would be political opposition and protests and so on related to this. And we are seeing some of it play out. Now, are you having a rethink or are you sure that you will be able to finish the project on the timelines decided? Oh, no. Now we are double confident because at the end of the day, when we talk to the people at the ground level, those are the people who are really wanting the change. Those are people who are really waiting for a better life. We are talking about almost third generation people who are wanting to see a change in their lives, getting out of this inhuman conditions. And they said that they are fully supporting us. But not everyone is taking the Adanis at their word. As Pranav walks the narrow passages that connect the dwellings, accompanied by his security team, residents approach him with their concerns. Everyone should get a room over here only. Do not shift to other anywhere. All our people will get your only room. And we must be satisfied. Give us some letters. What do you want in the letters? You are giving us or no? How you are going to do this? You want, okay. Ah, you so should uh, provide people's letters. Pranav is confident that the group will complete the Dharavi redevelopment project in seven years. But it's not the only thing on his plate. Pranav, who is the son of Gautam Adani's elder brother, Vinod, is in charge of the group's most consumer-focused businesses through joint ventures with food processing giant Wilmar and French energy major Total. He's also responsible for protecting the Adani brand, a role that's attracted fresh scrutiny since the group was accused of fraud and stock manipulation by the short seller Hindenburg Research last year. As the senior most among the second generation leaders, what could you have done differently to avoid the kind of allegations which were posed by Hindenburg? So I think, yes, there were learnings, I would say, from the whole Hindenburg episode. As a group, we have always been very focused on operational excellence, on execution. There are times when we have missed out in the kind of communications that we should do to our shareholders, to media in particular, now, from an optic point of view, we've become very clear that we go out and communicate more transparently uh, about uh, you know, the structures and about things like the finances. In particularly, uh, I don't know if you lately heard that we are also very clearly working towards bringing down the EBITDA to debt ratio. So now we are getting our ratios also, and, and we are going out communicating more. I think the Hindenburg allegations and the reports caught you or caught the group 
kind of by surprise. So if a situation like this comes up again, how will you manage that differently? Uh, so, you know, like I said, there was a lot of learning that happened during the Hindenburg episode. And now I think as a group, uh, as a team, we are very well equipped to fight any such situation that comes in future. One is, you know, very clearly we should try and make sure that nothing like this comes in. But now the systems are set up in such a way that in future ever, if there is any such financial attack on us, uh, we are much better equipped uh, through, through resources. There are accusations and allegations that the group's surge in market cap, the jump in the family's wealth, is due to its relationship with Prime Minister Narendra Modi. When you talk about chronic capitalism in India or in this part of the world, Adani's is one name that keeps coming up. So it also kind of reflects in the way the stocks are volatile when election results come out. How do you assuage these concerns? See, again, um, these are issues that have come up in media or by wasted interest, frankly. As a group, we are in almost actively in 24 states. We are invested in 24 states out of the 28 states in India. And when I say we are invested, that means we are heavily invested, whether it is infrastructure, whether it is energy, whether it is resources, we are actively involved. Now see, any time when you have large investments in any state, it has to be aligned with the priorities of the state. Yes, of course we are close to all the leadership of the state with different political parties. It is not that only one political party is running all the states. Different political parties are there across all the states and we are close to them. Don't forget, whenever they do this investor summit, they actually come and invite us to come and you know, invest in their state. So, of course, when you're doing any large project, you have to be close to them. We are also invested in a lot of neighboring countries. Now, when we enter any neighboring countries, besides financial decisions that we take on the project, how good they are, we also look at what that host country requires. Whether it's infrastructure, energy, resources, we are aligned with those countries' national priorities. Then the most important is the strategic interest of India also should be aligned. So when all those three aligns, I think this is the best investment strategy. So I think it's false and incorrect to say that, you know, Adani Group is only invested or is only looking at where, you know, the present party is invested. 